I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over dales and hills till all at once I saw a crowd, a host of lovely daffodils. Actually, I think it's golden daffodils, but you get my point. Welcome back, everyone. So, today I'm going to continue with my series on plant and uh, tree folklore of Britain and Ireland, and today we're going to be looking at the daffodil and the folklore surrounding that. Uh, so it is um, coming towards the end of March now. We're in between the spring equinox and Easter. So a lot of daffodils have been popping up just like in Wordsworth poem there. So I did a, uh, a video recently on the goddess Ostara um, or Istra, who we get the um, name of our Christian festival of Easter from. Uh, Easter is the goddess of spring and the dawn. Uh, so if you want to see that video I'll put it up here somewhere. But I spoke a little bit about in that video about the daffodil and its um, associations. Um, so just continuing on that vein really because someone asked me about it in the comments. So a lot of associations, a bit of a, a bit of a controversial uh, flower, the daffodil or the narcissus. Um, quite complex associations in mythology, but certainly in Anglo-Saxon, English, and Germanic folklore, the daffodil is associated with um, uh, joy and good luck, uh, fertility, new life, hope, and sort of maybe sexual promiscuity as well. Just like the goddess Ostara um, or Aurora if you're looking at the Roman uh, pantheon, or Eos in the Greek. So a lot of similar things. Um, but also, there's a bit of a dark side, just like uh, just like the goddess Eos, the goddess of the East, um, <laughs> can lead mortals astray. You know, she can be a bit uh, inconstant in her in her affections. The daffodil too has a bit of a bit of a dark side that I'll get onto. Uh, just as a side note as well on the um, naming daffodil, I used to think daffodil was named after St David, St Daffith, the patron saint of Wales, uh, which is still one possible etymology, but apparently most people think it's a corruption of the asphodel, a very similar plant which grows in Elysium, the Greek other world. So another classical and otherworldly link. More on that later. But yes, in uh, Britain, this plant is very much associated with the patron saint of Wales, St David, uh, because his patron saint day is in March, hence they spring to life this time of year. Obvious Christian associations, the daffodil, this joyous flower springing up around Easter time with those Christian promises of eternal life and all that jazz. What's really interesting about this as well, uh, daffodil bulbs, you know, they last for a very long time in the ground um, and they're usually planted in the grounds of religious buildings like this churchyard I'm in here, they're often planted on graves. Again, that link to the other world. Uh, a good friend of mine is actually buried in this churchyard, so I will be going to say hello to him after I've made this video. But you also, you also sometimes get daffodils springing up in the most extraordinary places in desolate moors and woods, just like Wordsworth's poem I read at the beginning. And some people suggest that's because they used to be planted in the grounds of monasteries and churches that have since been demolished or uh, raised to the ground or dissolved in some way. So the symbolism of that I think is great because again this pagan imagery, this pre-Christian imagery outlasting the physical and spiritual structure of the Christian church itself uh, and springing back rebirth, new life, again tying into the associations of Ostara and Easter. However, uh, this plant probably has more associations with the classical world. It's not actually a native to Britain, this plant. Uh, it was supposedly introduced by the Romans so they could chew on the bulbs to commit suicide if they were defeated in battle. That might be uh, not true, but it's a nice idea. But certainly this came from the Mediterranean, this plant. But it's very, very naturalised now in Britain and Ireland. And as I say, associated with Celtic Christianity. Um, in Greek and Roman mythology, there's a few associations with the daffodil. One of them is the name Narcissus. So uh, Narcissus is where we get the name narcotic from because this is, although pretty, a very toxic plant. But also the uh, a figure in, in Greek and Roman mythology, Narcissus, where we get the name 
narcissistic from, i.e. self-loving. So there was a prophecy that this young boy would be the most beautiful boy among all mortals. But if he would ever see his own reflection, he would fall in love with it and eventually die. So his mum, obviously, just hid any shiny object around the house. But then eventually, one day, Narcissus saw his own reflection in a pool of water or a stream. And he was so entranced by it that he could do nothing else and eventually wasted away and died. And where he died, the Narcissus flower grew. So it's just a very interesting little myth, the myth of Narcissus, especially for our modern age. We are in a kind of narcissistic age, I think, what with TikTok and scrolling and Instagram and all this social media self-love stuff. You know, we're in a we're in a very I, me, 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 me time. So Narcissus is is uh, very much a myth for the modern age. And this flower, I think. My girlfriend said something to me the other day. She said this flower almost looks like it's been computer generated. It's pretty, it's beautiful, but it looks kind of fake, like it was done by the simulators up there. Uh, so I think the sense of that in the Narcissus myth, that this is superficial vanity, this flower, that's some of the associations. In the myth of Narcissus also, uh, we see the, the, the nymph Echo that falls in love with Narcissus, who doesn't pay her any attention, he's too involved in himself, and she just um, uh, is sort of in an echo chamber of her own love, a bit like social media again today, and eventually she uh, she, she she dies as well. Um, but yes, the love is unrequited. So yes, this is a flower of love, but sometimes unrequited love. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in love magic, it's not something I'm going to really talk about on this channel much, but bring someone a bunch of da daffodil flowers if you're going to give an offering. Never just give one, because then your love will be unrequited. That's how the old folk magic goes, anyway. So, uh, that is the story of Narcissus and, uh, yeah, the, the, the dangers of self-love. So, yeah, just be careful with this flower. Uh, the other story in classical mythology involving this flower is is uh it ties back into ostara actually and these whole bunch of indo-european goddesses and divinities that arrive heralding times of year uh, bridget is one associated with imbola who takes over from the kaliach queen of winter you know th this theme happens a lot in indo-european especially northern european um mythology so in this case there's the goddess Ceres, or Demeter, goddess of the harvest, and she has a daughter called Persephone. Now, they live on the bank of a great lake where everything is safe and it's spring all the time. But you see, Hades has seen Persephone and she's a bit of a hottie, and Hades, god of the underworld, Pluto, wants to have her. So what he does, he sends Venus, goddess of love, along to make lots of daffodils just appear on the banks of this water, this sacred lake. And daffodils often grow alongside lakeside, so there's a bit of a truth to this. So Persephone is wondering and is intoxicated by the aroma of the daffodils and just follows a trail of daffodils. Then one pops up, pops up there, pops up there, and she just walks further and further away from the safety of her mother, the corn goddess Demeter, Ceres, Cereal. And then Hades, Pluto, erupts out of the ground in a chariot drawn by black horses with fire in his eyes and he captures her and takes her down into the underworld and rapes her and she has to stay there forever. He tricks her into eating some pomegranate seeds which means she's eaten of the other world and she's got to stay there. Common theme in Indo-European myth that. Uh, but eventually Zeus intervenes because Ceres is the goddess of the harvest and she's, because her daughter's been kidnapped, she's basically gone nope no more no more fertility again this is another uh this is a uh, 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 Osta ostara's job in in uh, anglo-saxon myth no more fertility no more lambs mating no more no more life nothing's going to grow anymore so zeus can't be dealing with that so uh, so he says come on to his brother come on hades we've got to sort this out so the deal struck is this persephone gets to return to the upper world for six months of the year and for the other six months of the year, Hades keeps her. Hence why uh, the trees and flowers are in bloom 
uh, for spring and summer. So this time of year is when Persephone has emerged out of the underworld. And we see that theme a lot in Indo-European mythology. It was, there was probably something like that with the Anglo-Saxon goddess Istaka associated with this time of year. We've now lost it because we don't have any, um, we don't have very much on that goddess, just a little bit by bead. But, um, but yeah, this, this theme is seen a lot in Indo-European mythology and deities. So this flower apparently grows on the banks of the river Styx in the underworld. So this is a flower that you can see trailing down in the underworld. So if ever you find yourself in hell, follow the train of daffodils and you'll find your way out like breadcrumbs. What does that mean psychologically? I don't know. You let me know. Um, so yeah, a flower with strong associations in the other world, both lower and upper. Uh, but yes, also um, strongly associated in English folk magic as well so lots lots of uses for this usually around love or bringing good luck just remember not to bring a single daffodil into your house always bring a bunch um, but yeah in the historical sources there's lots of stories of uh, these flowers being uh, laid on altars around um, Easter month so yeah a very, pop very popular flower in the folklore with uh, a bit of an ambivalent feel to it so thanks for listening. Bit of a ramble again, but uh, I will be back soon with more folklore, mythology and storytelling. Thank you for listening. See you later.